My name is Dr. Boyanovsky, and this video shows the removal of a large tumor located on the upper surface of the tentorium, extending to the posterior edge of the tentorial incisura. It is approached via supracerebellar transtentorial route. This is the pre-operative MRI of a 62-year-old female readmitted in 2012 for cognitive disorders and a left homonymous hemianopia. This patient had previously been operated on, a few years prior, for a solitary fibrous tumor attached to the dura of the posterior fossa at the level of the transverse sinus. This enhanced T1 sequence shows the recurrence of the tumor attached to the superior surface of the tentorium. On the coronal view, this large lesion involves the posterior third of the tentorial incisura. Standard approaches for this challenging tumor, such as subtemporal, the transtemporal, or the interhemispheric parieto occipital root, are all associated with transgression and or retraction of the brain. A transtentorial supracerebellar approach is the direct approach to the lesion itself which minimizes manipulation of the surrounding neural structures. Under general anesthesia, a lumbar drain was inserted to be used later in the procedure to relax the cerebellum and thereby increase the working space between the tentorial surface of the cerebellum and the tentorium itself. It allows to minimize the size of the craniotomy without the need to open the foramen magnum. The patient is then placed in a park bench position with the affected side facing upward. The head is flexed and rotated towards the unaffected side with the face slightly towards the floor. A unilateral suboccipital craniotomy is performed, extending upward to expose the transverse sinus. A large craniotomy is preferred to maximize the working window once the cerebellum is relaxed after drainage of CSF through the lumbar drain. The craniotomy may be extended to the level of the foramen magnum, especially if one prefers to open the cisterna magna instead of placing a, a lumbar drain. Here the dura has already been opened. The exposed cerebellum is protected with surgicel. Via a supracerebellar approach, the inferior surface of the tentorium is exposed. Usually one of or two tentorial veins may have to be coagulated during the exposure of the inferior surface of the tentorium. It is important to have a large exposure of the tentorium in order to ensure a maximum view of the supra-tentorial compartment. The underside of the tentorium is exposed as far as the posterior incisura. The tentorium is coagulated where the tumor sits contributing to devascularize the lesion. The tentorium is then incised near the center of the base of the tumor and the opening is partially enlarged using micro scissors. The edges of the opening are then retracted with silk 4-0. The redly exposed vascular tumor is progressively debulked using standard procedures, here using the bipolar. This video has been shortened since the bulking took quite some time, given the size of the tumor. After partial debulking, we proceed with an extra capsular dissection to gently pull the tumor towards the opening in the tentorium.
As the tumor is being debulked and consequently descends towards the opening in the tentorium, more and more of the surrounding brain tissue can be seen. Very minimal retraction is needed. Throughout the procedure, cotonoids are placed around the periphery between the brain and the tumor. Once the tumor has been completely removed, the upper surface of the tentorium, where the tumor sat, is coagulated. The surgical bed is covered with surgical cell. A neuro patch was placed on the underside of the tentorium to cover the opening in it. We then proceeded with closure and shearing a watertight seal of the dura. Post-op MRI reveals an excellent resection of the tumor with no injury to the neural tissue. The patient also underwent post-operative radiotherapy. At the last clinical follow-up, Three years after the surgery, she remains only with a right superior quadranopsia, and there was no evidence of recurrence.